Good morning, November the 24th, 2014. This is CISG 113, Section 1, Information Security and Privacy. Today is day number 27, okay, in week number 14, the last week of the semester, if we do not take into account next week called the Makeup Week. So, week number 14, day number 27. So let's get started. Good morning. Welcome back to today's class, day number 27, November the 24th, CISG 113, Section 1. Today, we have two teams, teams, right? Teams. They, they would like to participate in the in-class forum, the bonus work for the semester. So they are supposed to take 10% of the work uh, to add it to the final grade. So I welcome this twice, very important. So before I pass the time to the two teams in about 15 minutes, allow me to get back to today's message of the day, or better say, of the week. First of all, as promised last week, now at the very end of the Mundo environment, you can see the two specific links. One link is called choosing my assessment scheme, plan A or plan B. And you know what plan A is, and you know what plan B is, if you go back to the teacher's message of last week. So you have to indicate your choice here. Now if I could not see your choice here, by the time I finish grading the work, I will take that. You will prefer plan A. So no choice means plan A, all right? And for the second link, you can see that choosing my full school learning contract. Learning contract one, learning contract two, and learning contract three. Now, you are given the freedom to choose which learning contract you would like to receive full score. That means full 10% of the 100% semester score. So, take any one of this and make sure you have the choice here before the end of December the, the 4th, okay, the end of next week, the second make-up day, all right? Now, again, if I do not see a choice here, I will take that. You would like to have the full score for the first learning contract, LC001, okay? So I basically given you the housekeeping chore you need to do to indicate your assessment plan and also to indicate the full school learning contract you would like to receive. It's called the teacher's encouragement score, all right? No matter how you did in the particular learning contract, you are there to learn and you are saved because you're given full score for that particular learning contract. And so if you come to um, today's teacher's message, okay, this is the teacher's message week number 14, I have given you a very detailed picture of the week-by-week -week um, curriculum and also the schedule of our topics together with the specific assignment of the semester they are called the coursework and the specific questions or topics in which you should have already done a lot in your journal. So walking you back to this summary of our course learning, you can see very clearly the first four weeks starting from August the 25th to September the 20th. These four weeks is considered as learning contract number one. And so in the first week, we have two topics. What is information security? What is information privacy? In the second week, we have five topics. What is information technology? What is knowledge society? What is ethics in information age? What is social responsibility in the information age? What is digital divide in the 21st century? Okay, so, and in the, this are uh, in the second and third width because the indicator of the horizontal line is here. And in the fourth width, again, you have two questions. What is information literacy and what is information competency? And you remember when we go through those topics, we were given a very detailed video 
in each of those questions to help you explore the specific topic. And then what we'd like you to do is not just to listen to the information provided, but to go through a process for inquiry-based learning where you start doing the journals for a specific topic. Remember, when you go through the first learning contract, out of the many topics here, there are two, two, three, the seven, nine topics here, you are only required to do one topic and use that topic to write the journals. Although, you know that according to our Learn to Learn score of the semester, you are expected to pick at least one topic per week and study that topic and get the journal done. And that is how you obtain the Learn to Learn score. But for the first learning contract, instead of pinpointing on the quantity of topics, we would like you to do only one topic and develop using that specific topic your journals and discuss with your learning partner the discussion forums, write the proposals with your peer partner on what you want to do, write the reflective block, and then the report. Okay? So all of these forms the basis of your learning that it's one single topic for a specific period of time given your focused attentions. And we emphasize that using the IBL concept where you look into the observations of a topic you can discover because under each one of these questions we have given you a number of information items for you to choose one of them. And you are encouraged to do at least three but one will be good enough for you to find the O, and then you come to the interpretations part, and then you come to the application part. But these observations, questioning, and lessons learned for the OIA process help you to pinpoint a topic and get some understanding without a lot of what we call memorizations. And so, getting through the first learning contract, studying on September the 21st, down to October the 11th. This free which we consider this as the second learning contract. And then if you look at the number of topics there, there are the most number of topics in the second learning contract. As you can see in the first week of the second learning contract, you have four topics. In the second week of the second learning contract, again you have four topics. In the third week of the learning contract, number two, you have three topics. That means you have 11 topics there. Again, out of 11 topics, you're only required to do one topic in your second learning contract, okay? Although, I need to repeat, according to the Learn to Learn activity, you are expected to do at least one topic in each of these three wins. And so as to have enough of the artifacts and experience to gain your Learn to Learn score. So, you can count the number of topics here, and you can see the coverage that is to be selected by each one of you. So each one of you should have a different learning path based on the topic you choose. Look at that. It looks like, if you look at it very carefully, in a second learning contract, some of these topics are actually overlapping between the two wits, as you can see there. Web attacks, interact vulnerability, found the first two topics here again. And then hacking and cracking, Africa issues and hacking and cracking. That means if you minus the duplicated topics, the number of distinct topics could be fewer than 10. All right? So it's a spread up, spread it across three widths. It's not so complicated. But in the second learning contract, what's required here is not just the IBL, but the SRL specific. And overall, you also have an extra learning tool called the Collaborate Wiki introduced to you, all right? So the SRL requires of you to have learning goals, so we also invite you, when you select this topic, you need to first select two silos first in the second learning contract, and after you have selected the silo, select topic according to the silos. And so you set the learning goals, you have your timeline, you have the manpower to divide up into two pairs, and then each pair is responsible for one cycle. That means the specific topic related to that cycle. And again, we invite you to do learning journals, discussion forums, the report, the proposals, rock, as well as getting 
the first touch of the collaborative wiki, working out in the wiki environment together, building the artifacts, and then re review them together. All right. So this is the second learning contract. So having gone through the second learning contract, which is only three wits, okay, we come to the third learning contract. Again, this is three wits, but eventually we got four wits time to do it. So in the third learning contract, which starts from October the 12th and ends on November the 1st, but it eventually ends on November the 9th, because we have one more week extend for that. You can see the number of topics in the first foot of the first learning contract are two, and then the top number of topics in the second with of the first learning contract again two, and they do have some overlapping, as you can see, one, at least one topic overlap, and then for the third width, and then again you have two, and again you have one topic overlap. So exactly how many topics is there? One, two, three, four topics, all right, in the three widths. So uh, four topics, and you need to choose one, all right? And again, if we go back to the learn to learn score, you need to have at least one topic done per week to get yourself ready for the semester's learn to learn score. So again, you, if you can look at this, the number of topics become fewer, and then you have twice the amount of people in the first learning contract divided into uh, two pairs, and you are again have to choose another two silos to get your work done. And, and the question comes up immediately, if the silo requires a topic which is not available in this free width, what are we supposed to do? And then the answer is very simple. Go back to first learning contract or the second learning contract where you have all the topics you can choose to make sure you can cover what is required in the silo. And again, you have to do something very consistent. You need to do the journal, discussion forums, report, wiki, proposals, and the broth. So throughout the semester, throughout the free learning contract, from week number one to week number 10, you are invited to do something very consistent, all right? You need to select a topic, you need to select a sign up so as to select a topic, you need to write a journal for the topic, that means to discover the observations of a topic, ask questions in the forms of interpretations, and come up with lessons learned in the forms of applications. So it's very important that you structure your journal in the OIA format, because once you structure your journal in the OIA format, your report will come naturally in OIA format after discussions, and then you also will come up with new ideas with a proposal. And at the end of that, you need to write a blog. The blog is the most important writing in each learning contract. It's not the least important because it comes to the very last. So your blog, most of you at the very beginning have made the mistake that you just write a few lines without paying attention of how you're going to address what you've learned from the topic so you did not get a very good points. But in the second learning contract, in fact, learning contract, a lot of you have already improved on that. You know how to make the best use of a journal. You know how to make the best use of a report. You write a rock in such a way that it's the best of the both world. So this is very important that I can see from your learning artifacts, you're going through a process. So going through the process of the journal, which is a very primitive form of the work, through discussions, you got feedback from your learning partner and also teammates, you come to do the report. And the end of the report, you try to extract from the report what belongs to you and add it to this, the experience of your fellow learning partner and teammate, you write a blog. And then at the end of that, in the third learning contract, you also need to produce a PowerPoint based upon the report and extract your digital story over your PowerPoint. And that is a very likely way to distill the knowledge, okay? And many of you have already achieved doing this. All of today, I'm also going to give you some specific on what you can do with the digital story. All right, so this is the third learning contract. And at the end of that, we have five weeks reserved for the learning portfolio. The learning portfolio is reserved for week number 11, 12, 13, and 14. Now, since we took number, week number 11 as an extended week from a contract, originally speaking, you just have three other widths for 
the learning portfolio. But fortunately, we have the makeup week, so we do not lose the, the extra week that has been extended to for the contract. So over this period of time, starting from week number 12, 13, and this is week number 14, the next week is week number 15, you still have four weeks time to put things together based on your work in the first learning contract, second learning contract, and the third learning contract. And what you need to do is to look into the six possible sign in this course, select four sign notes, and for each sign note, put in your interpretations of what the sign note requires of you, ask yourself what learning artifact have you already produced for that sign note, and write some reflections for each of the sign note. At the end of this, you need to come back to if these include the artifact included learning journals uh, of some other things, blog, uh, PowerPoint, and digital story, you need to include all of this, all right? So when we say four signos, that means four sets of things like you need to have a journal for each sign note, a blog for each sign note, your um, PowerPoint for the sign note, and your digital story for the sign notes, okay? So, and then for each of the learning contract, I expect you to write some refractive comment for each learning contract, and then refractive comment for each of the sign up. All of these put in your learning portfolio, all right? And again, you know that I do not need to repeat, but I have to repeat, I'm sorry, I need to do a wide. If you have done your in-class bonus work, you also need to have an entry in your learning portfolio. And if you want to obtain your learn to learn score, you must have an entry in your learning portfolio. If you want to obtain your in-class participation score, you also need to have an entry in your learning portfolio. So, if that is the case, use your learning portfolio as the basis to work out your final score. And I basically have finished grading your learning contract number three, except for the wiki, all right? I'm going to give you a score of the wiki by, to, uh, by the end of tomorrow. And so, and then I'll move on to do the midterm exam, and you should know all of these before first thing, right? So that will be very good. So in this very last week of the semester, you know your midterm, you know your free learning contract, and your focus now is on your learning portfolio. All right, I think I have already finished what I've said. And remember, uh, this is a very important set of questions you need to ask yourself when you write a blog. And when you read my comments to your blog, for the third learning contract, you know that you have to think about the SRL details as well as the PBR details, all right? And these are the topics of the semester. And so, if you want to know exactly how you have been doing, and you know that at each week, you have the before class activity, during class activity, after class activity, and end of the week activity. And I hope you have been doing that, and there is nothing you need to submit but if you read each one of this, you know that consistently I am inviting you, reminding you, haunting you, as well as towards the end, pushing you to get the 10 journals done in order not to lose the 15 points of the learn to learn score, all right? So as a teacher, this is the most I could do to remind you that this is your obligations in order to obtain a score. And then, now, as I have said, you should know this free learning contract score by now and the midterm score before first day, okay? And this is the bonus work time. Today, we have two teams, all right? They are willing to do the bonus work, and so I'm going to pass the time to them, okay? So let me take attendance first, in case I forget, all right? Because I remember that. Uh, yeah, um, that, that's Barker that needs to go first. So allow me to say that it's very important you stay close with my teacher's message every week. I'm trying to remind you of something very important of your obligations to fulfill your work. All right. So now attendance call: Helia, Claudia, Ada, yes, Ryan Wong. Thank you. Jenny, thank you. Jackie, Jackie, Wang, not yet today. Wai Pan, thank you. Um, and then Si Hong, thank you. Matfong, 
Bitrits, thank you. Uh, Fish, thank you. Angela, thank you. Erika, Erika is not here today, okay. And then Ruby, thank you. C, thank you. And then Belisa, not here today. Loka, thank you. Stephen, thank you. Terence, thank you. Uh, Winnie Fern, thank you. Tom, Tom is not here today. Dixon, thank you. Winnie Ho, she's not here today. Uh, Gideon, thank you. Friend, thank you. Michelle, thank you. Um, Annie, thank you. Cindy, thank you. Nia, thank you. Ryan, thank you. Uh, Lester, thank you. Calvin, thank you. Gagan, yes, she's here, so you need to go first. Hanson, not here today. Oh, sorry, thank you. Jessica, thank you. Um, Titi, thank you. Charlie, thank you. Um, and then Iris, thank you. All right, now I have finished taking attendance. Remember, this is the street directly from San Francisco. I just got it on Saturday, all right? So if you're free, cut it open and pass the suite to whoever who's willing to participate in your discussions. All right, may I pass the time to the first team, which is, um, let's say, uh, it's a seamless team, all right? It's team number two, right? Uh, not team number two. All right, it's a seamless team. And after that is Helia's team, it's team number one, all right? So each team, you will have 30 minutes time, okay? Please come up here, pick up the microphone, and lock me out, and then use your account in case you need it, all right? And so feel free to cut it open and share the scripts, all right? This is for you. Yes. Thank you. Use the microphone. Uh, good morning, everybody. Uh, we are Team One, and I'm Cindy. She is Jessica, Charlie, and Annie. Today, we are going to share the topics of computer crimes. And first, let me have a short introduction of computer crimes. Computer crimes refers to all the all the crimes that happen in the computer computer or on the internet. And generally, there are two types of computer crimes. So the first type is using other status as a target, and the second type is using a, using the targets or using their website as a tool to com constitute crimes. And the first type of the computer crimes is actually uh, generally, uh, like uh, identity thief and providing computer virus and sending drug email. And the second types include the uh, copyright soft providing copyright software and MP3 and like network gambling and setting up pornographic website. And now let me 
was um, let us watch a video of the ten cases which happened in the past.
So the question is, what are the causes of computer crimes? They're giving you two to three minutes time to discuss first, and then they will get to you to see if you were willing to share. Yes, you can have uh, two microphones, one on each side, so that you can get people involved in sharing their ideas. What are the causes of computer crime? Yes. Okay, thank you for your question. In my answer for my ideas, I think the cause of computer crime is the development of technology. The more technology we use, the more information we put online, because the greedy people, he, he or she want to steal our data to look into our daily life, that caused the computer crimes. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, I, I think you want to continue to pass the microphone to other people who would like to share. Yes. Yes. Remember, your job is to help your fellow student to give their ideas and to help one another share their ideas, okay? will have serious effect on these victims. Nowadays, people have many creative ways to commit computer crimes because of the advanced technology, as Helia said. Um, so I will give you a video to have some information. Thank you. 
watching this video, I think you should discuss. Uh, you should discuss how to defend cybercrime. I'll give you several minutes. It's the website that you got and and it can reduce the potential risk of being hacked. Thank you. Thank you. Does anyone have uh, uh, other idea? Uh, don't hold your personal data to to the screeners. Yes. one is pay attention to the strange website, especially those that ask for your 
name, bank account numbers. Perhaps it is deceive your data. Uh, to conclude, a lot of people are lack of knowledge of what is the computer crimes. Most of them may think that it will not happen on them, so they may not concern about it. This is the most wrong concept in our mind. Result in many people can break into our computer easily. Because people don't do anything to protect themselves. Moreover, it has a lot of super crackers nowadays. We should pay more attention to this. Otherwise, we will lose our personal data through the network easily. After we have known the meaning of computer crimes, we may know how to protect it. We may want to know how can protect ourselves for some confidential documents or personal data. We can use the method to defend those computer crimes which are just mentioned by Jessica. Although those methods that we have just mentioned may not 100% work, but uh, it's still better than we do nothing. Uh, that's all our presentation. Thank you very much. Uh, you did a very good job in helping us to understand more. Thank you. Now let's take a five minutes break and let's put some thought into what they have helped us to understand uh, about the cyber crimes, about the computer crimes, the causes of computer crimes and the way to prevent computer crimes, okay? And before 10.55, okay? When it's 10.55, we are going to pass the time to the team led by Helia, okay? So, try to talk among yourself if you understand the questions produced by your fellow students in the in-class forum. And at the same time, you can enjoy the sweets. You're free to talk. And of course, if you have a question you want to ask me, you're free to ask. Just waste your hand. Remember, in class forum, it's the occasion where you try to get as much discussions about your fellow students as possible. Again, you give them something, you give them time to think about that something, and you ask them for your feedback, for their feedback. You listen, and you let the whole classroom listen. Okay? And so at the end, you provide some trigger to tell them a little bit about this, a little bit about that. Okay? The job is to make sure some of you, that many of you, could participate in the discussions.
this first thing, right? Make sure you um, you go back to the top of that top line. So we get to see the record. Okay, uh, Harry, are you ready? Okay. information security and privacy. And first, we need to know what is information security and privacy. And security is making sure uh, user data stays secure and privacy is related to personal data store or uh, computer system. And it is also known as uh, data privacy. Uh, actually, it is uh, easy to understand. And there is one question about hacking. And you have a video to help you to answer this question. What do you know about hacking? Do you think getting into someone's Facebook account or Google account is called hacking? No, not really. In computer networking, hacking is any technical effort to manipulate behavior of network connections and connected systems. Hacking is historically referred to constructive, clever, technical work that was not necessarily related to computer systems. So where did hacking originate? MIT engineers in 1960s carried out some harmless technical experiments and fun learning activities. These were so-called hacks. Before the internet, several hackers in the US experimented with methods to modify telephones or making free long distance calls over the phone network illegally. As computer networking and internet exploded in popularity, Data networks became the most common target of hackers. Malicious attacks on computer networks are officially known as cracking, while hacking truly applies only to activities having good intentions. However, most non-technical people fail to make this distinction. Hacking on computer networks is often done through scripts or other network programming. These programs generally manipulate data passing over a network connection in ways designed to obtain more information about how the target system works. Many such prepackaged scripts are posted on the internet for anyone 
typically entry level hackers to use. More advanced hackers may study and modify these scripts to develop new methods. A few high skilled hackers work for commercial firms with the job to protect that company's software and data from outside hacking. Cracking techniques on networks include creating worms, initiating denial of service DOS attacks, or establishing unauthorized remote access connections to a device. I will talk more about viruses, worms, DOS attacks, etc. on this channel. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. And for more such video, just hit the subscribe button. And as always, thanks for watching. Uh, therefore, hackers are not the illegal uh, activity which endangers the privacy and security of important online information. And and here we got two questions for us to discuss. The first question is: Do you have any experiences about privacy? Is mean do you have any privacy data stolen by others? Can you share your opinion, uh, experiences? Thank you. We'll give you three minutes to discuss. received a message from Facebook that say that my account was locked in on on a different country that is Canada. My account was stolen by some Canadians. That's I was stuck that time and I think that that is bad so I changed my password. Now we have a reader to let you know what kind of privacy we have to meet on Facebook. This is a Q film to let you know about privacy on Facebook. Let's watch. The title is See How You Sleep We Can Take Over Your Life. Mm -hmm. 
ons heeft naast zijn gewone leven vandaag de dag ook een online leven. Mag ik je voorstellen, mijn nieuwste vriend, Tom de Grote. Tom zit sinds 2010 op Facebook. Hij heeft bijna 700 friends, maar dat is sinds kort één dus. Hij is 35 en al sinds jaar en dag in de Brugge. Daar heeft hij ook Sophie leren kennen. Zijn het geen schatjes? We stuurden hem een phishing mail, zo gezegd in naam van zijn echte bank, met de vraag om enkele gegevens te bevestigen. Eens bij die hebben voor staat nog één nepteelefoon, John, zo zijn rekening leeg te houden. Maar ik... Ik ben iets anders van plan. Want intussen ken ik Tom immers zo goed dat ik niet zijn bankrekening ga overnemen, maar... zijn leven. Letterlijk. Snel, Tom. Zo, je bent intussen al goed in zijn vuil te voelen. Tijd voor een testje. Ja, we gaan ons dag zeggen aan Krieke, de baas van zijn stamcafé. Want daar is Tom kind aan huis, dus ik ook. Tom. You see this how your online data was stolen by other and they will act what you in the real life and still over what you have in your life. Let's go to the second question. Okay, the second question is how to protect your privacy. Okay, maybe I give you one minute to discuss. Yeah. After you have watching this film, how you feel and how you can protect it and how you can avoid it in your life. Yeah. 
attempt to protect your privacy. Hello? Hello? Stephen, do you have any idea? Okay, thank you. Um, in, my opinion, in my opinion, I think we should keep change our password and don't, and don't show our financial data to Facebook or Internet. Okay, thank you, Stephen. You have a good idea. Thank you. Uh, I think we should not reveal our personal details or information to the stranger or through email even though some like some company ask for your information you can just uh, send an email to them to uh, to make sure if they are uh, if they are their company's information is it's verified or uh, it is just someone who who initiated. So okay, thank you. Hello. Listen, do you have any, any idea? Thank you. Uh, in the social network we don't add some strangers or accept their friends. I will, I will stop using Facebook and Facebook WeChat and and throw my phone away. <laughs> Obviously, this is impossible. Uh, but the best answer is from yours. Uh, and to keep password uh, open and 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 then upload too much personal data on the internet. Thank you. How are you? Separate Wi Fi, uh, such as the public Wi Fi, to log in your bank account or cover account that related to your login. Thank you. Any other ideas? How about boys ideas over here? <coughs> When you sell your home before, um, you should uh, delete your data first. Thank you. Thank you for all your answers. Now we are going to sum up your answers. Some answers will come from to change our first password openly to make sure that we will not lose our password and also we can use the method that they teach before is to change the password not only one, two, three, but plus any other letters and any other size to make sure that's not easy to be hacking into your account. And also the bank number we should keep a secret and when that that girl's serve for us is the clinic that he she just went will send her advertisements. So we cannot just delete other people so easily. We can make sure that uh, we can ask him for uh, any other details for deleting our personal data. And also that answers from, sorry, I don't know what your name. We should uh, not sign in our bank number or bank account or Taobao account in public Wi-Fi, we can use our 3G or some safe Wi-Fi just like our UMAX secured Wi-Fi. We can use this to sign in, but not other Wi-Fi. Then other opinion is, when we set our phone, we should uh, delete our data and share it with empty data. And this is our sum up, and hope you've enjoyed this story. Thank you.
Thank you very much. And I think you did a very good job uh, helping us to understand the importance of privacy. It's very good. Um, let's. We still have uh, this first day and two more days next Monday and first day, um, so that um, if you're willing to join this all to back up your score, you still have a chance. Okay. So this coming first day, we have one team signed already, so we have one slot left. Okay. So if you want to do it, you can do it. Um, yeah, I think we can do it. If not, next week. Yeah. Although, if I remember correctly, uh, it is this first day we do have a course evaluations. And according to my memory, it will start at about 11. So from 10 to 10.30, from 10.30 to 11, we, we start up timely within a company, two, two teams, okay? So it will be very, your very last chance to earn your bonus score. If I were you, I would do my best, okay? No matter how many points you obtain, it's the number of points of 100 points, your final score. So it's very significant, all right? It's very significant. Okay? And, and look at the, the effort your fellow students have spent to provide the intonations that, that make it so interesting for you to understand something, all right? So that means you all should have this ability to get in touch with something very interesting uh, for a topic that is within the confines of your course. So, now, let me move to week number 14. If you look at very carefully the topics that I produced for week number 14, it's something about thinking, all right? Effective teamwork and thinking, all right? Let's try to give you a little bit of this. You have been listening to a lot of information, but if you're not thinking, you might not be able to capture something very interesting. Let's see if it's this one. Yes, let's try.
why it's so easy to watch a few minutes of this video and then forget about this. The idea of this video behind this is whenever you watch something, okay, there's certain criteria for us to understand something. And do you remember the several keywords they listed here? How many keywords do you remember over this four minutes of time? For each keyword, they give you a very clear and brief example, okay? So, and then the, the key to look at more information about this is to go back to your Wikipedia, type in crypto thinking, and try to see if you can repeat the several keywords. What I'm trying to tell you is, um, we have not done a very good job as teachers, as far as I, I, I believe we are concerned, particularly in secondary school, we did not help you to learn your advanced brain to think through something. We always ask you to do something easy, just to memorize it for the purpose of reproducing it. And so, when it comes down to critical thinking, if you look through the materials I give you, there is something called critical thinking essential. And if you read something like this, it's just for primary students. I'm sorry, I'm not, I'm not shame on you, okay? It will be very beneficial if you watch some of those critical thinking essential video they are for primary students. And I learned a lot from this. Okay, as a teacher. Oh yes, that's the way I should have help my students. Alright? So uh, but it's very important, okay, that this one give you a set of criteria, the number of keywords in parity, positions, graph. Depth, logic, analysis, you remember correctly. But if you want to know something more about this, there is something I believe I have included here. If not, I will include it back. It's called the critical thinking essentials. Okay? And these critical thinking essentials will give you um, a number of things which will be very useful. Yes, I think it's right here. Yes, I put it here. I hope you do not mind because uh, after my watching this carefully and study it very carefully, I let my kids study it too, okay? It's very inspirational, okay? Watch them, just a couple of minutes each, all right? And it could help you to develop a pattern of thinking that is very systematic and helped you through a lot of very interesting things. And you will use less of your memorization ability, but more on critical thinking, all right? So, try a little bit about this, okay? All right, and, and if you are still more interested in knowing something about thinking, the, the next class I'm going to introduce to you something about the six Hats of thinking, all right? So I think that's it for today, because it's already past 11.15. Thank you very much for the two teams of Woody Goose in Class Forum. And I'm looking forward to another two sets of teams and people to do it. You're free to go, all right? Thank you very much. So that's it for today's CISG 113, Section 1, Information Security and Privacy, the date number 27, November the 24th. 1914.